kid. I have been married for 10 years. I've been together with my wife for 14. I take care of my six, my four-year-old kids, like a Mr. Mom during the day, because I work like 20 minutes a night, a couple times a week. You know, I got a little time. <laughs> yeah. It's good news for guys over there. Oh yeah, I'm married 10 years, got a six and a four-year-old. So woohoo! Marijuana does not make you sterile. In case anybody's worried about that. <laughs> Took me like two and a half years to prove them wrong, but damn it, I did it! I got beautiful kids too, most beautiful three-eyed boys you've ever seen in your life. Perfect vision, 20, 20, 20. I don't know the big deal is. I took care of when they were little babies. They were both three months old. My wife went back to work full time, and I found out why men say taking care of a baby is woman's work. Because <laughs> it's freaking hard, that's why, man. If I didn't have my mother go five days a week to help me out. I had active kids, man. My first kid was walking, man, at nine and a half months. Second kid, eight and a half months. We think it was from the speed. We're not sure it could have been <laughs> anything I did in 1979. But they first start walking. When they, the thing, good thing about an active kid, though, here's the nice thing, is they get older and you go to a place out in public like Chuck E. Cheese or something like that. The greatest thing, by the time you leave that place, everybody there knows their name. <laughs> Daniel, get down! Daniel, leave that kid alone! Daniel, stop that! Daniel, no! Daniel, get back! Daniel, stop! Daniel, Daniel! Daniel! Because you know people are walking out going, boy, that Daniel was a handful. <laughs> what the hell was going on there, huh? They're getting back from Chuck E. Cheese. How was Chuck E. Cheese? Well, Daniel was there. <laughs> Because Daniel was active, man. He was walking in nine and a half months. I was going crazy, folks, for an entire month. I was just going nuts. I couldn't figure out what to do. And then at 10 and a half months old, I sat him down in the chair and I put on that magical dinosaur. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Screw you people. I love Barney. <laughs> I had 35 minutes of peace and quiet. I didn't even care if Barney was associated with the devil. Folks, I didn't care. I was loving Barney so much, I was having sex with my wife. I was thinking about Barney. Oh. <laughs> She was getting suspicious too. One night we got done, she said, how was it? I said, super D duper. <laughs> Terrific, that's not good, huh? She threw the purple negligee right in my face. I think we clued her in when I was slapping her ass going, who's your dino, who's your dino, who's your dino? <laughs> Don't worry folks, she liked it. I know she liked it because she was watching too much Teletubbies because she said, again, again, again. <laughs> Incredible things all the time. I couldn't believe it. They had a home pregnancy test at the dollar store. Do you believe that? Yeah, you know who buys their home pregnancy test at the dollar store? Same people to go there to buy condoms. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Come on, right? Some things you gotta pay a little bit more for, don't you? Catholics have ever been to a Catholic wedding? Non Catholics been to a Catholic wedding? Clap right now. Where you at? Come on. Yeah. I feel sorry for you people at a Catholic wedding. I think you need a translator. Not so much inside the church, but before the wedding, when Catholics will say things to each other like, hey, 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 is this a mass? Or is this a ceremony? <laughs> See, your translator would say, what time does the reception start? <laughs> when do we suck down the free booze? <laughs> Even if it is a man, the Catholics are out there going, does this count for my Sunday obligation? <laughs> do we have to go through this again tomorrow? See, because it's the length, the length of a mass, very important to a Catholic. You can see a Catholic leaving mass, he's looking at his watch, going 45 minutes in and out. <laughs> this guy's good. <laughs> I'm getting on a schedule with this man next week, 9.30. Bless him and regress him. I am there. <laughs> As strict Catholic parents always force us to go to Mass. How many cat little Catholics, when you're little kids, would tell your parents you're going to Mass, and then you skip on them? Where are you at? Come on, let me hear you. Come on, yeah. Always managed to get your hands on a church bulletin, though, didn't you? Church bulletin, yeah. It's got to have the bulletin, because that's your receipt from God. <laughs> this mama was there, there's my receipt from God. Right there. We had a little kid, he used to scout the bullets. You were scared to go in, 15 cents a bullet right out in front of the church. There's a little kid, it's a little Jewish kid sitting there selling them. That's right, yeah. That's right. You should have seen him on Ash Wednesday with a cigar bus. Thanks a lot there, Goldberg. You all right, man? You? Man, what a play. Yeah. I have two boys, believe it or not, I'm a dad, that's sad. Um, I have two boys, nine and 11. Yeah, dollar store condoms. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we had them baptized Catholic. Me and my wife, we had them baptized Catholic. You have to take a course now to get the kids baptized. You folks were, I didn't know that, man. Yeah, because I went to Catholic school for 12 years. I'm thinking, what do they think I forgot about baptism? You know? I think I'm gonna flip out of the big question. Do you reject Satan? Oh, whoa, wait a minute! Is that what this is all about? No, forget it, I'm taking a little Damien and we're getting out of here. Come on, Rosemary, grab the baby, let's go home. See, I know devout Catholics hate a joke like that. Because okay? my dad, my dad was a devout Catholic. Yeah, you folks know what that means, right? He drank a lot, I heard you. Yeah, uh, he did. 
He did drink like he would justify drinking with religion. He go, Pat, look, it's perfectly okay for Catholics to drink. Jesus himself, he drank wine. I was like, yeah, Dad, but I died before we got pulled over drunk cameling. I don't think that ever happened, right? <laughs> I think it was late at parties, things were getting dull. I think Jesus was the guy hopping up going, hey, you guys want to see a miracle or something? <laughs> He'd be great to have at a cake party there, wouldn't he? It's like, Lord, the cake is kicked. Check again, thy holy dude. It is filled again. It is good to hang with the Lord. Thou does not have to take the tap back. Keep your deposit, pagan. <laughs> see, folks, I do religious humor because I believe God has a sense of humor. Fact, I'm, well, pretty much counting on it, really, as you can see. Uh, ooh, yeah. I think you look at the functions of the human body, the way we're created, you can see God's sense of humor. Here's three words to prove to you God has a sense of humor. It uh, uh, would be feces. That's a big joke, God. He created us. He got all this stuff left over. He's like, what can I do with this? <gasps> I'll make it come out their ass. That's funny. I like that, yes. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, I'll put some gas in there. They think we got to go. I'll go do a slice of cheese. That's going to be funny for seconds. Probably had writers like Michael the Archangel come running in. Lord, I got something for you. What do you got? Booger. Booger. That sounds funny. What's it do? Kind of hangs out their nose. I like it. I like it. What's that? Sticks to their finger and they can't get it off. That is beautiful, Mike. That's beautiful. That's good. Now you got one more thing for me, Mike? What is it? Orgasm. Okay, what's that? Oh, it's a single most pleasurable part of their entire existence. All right, what's so funny about that? Only lasts four seconds. Got you, Mike. All right, got you. That's a good one. Men peak at about uh, age uh, 18, women 35. Well, that ought to screw them up pretty good. Um, men have theirs in 30 seconds, women five days. Okay, that's nice. The whole time they either yell out my son's name or mine. That's beautiful, I like that, that's great. Okay. That's all, that's the way it is. That lady knows, she knows what I'm saying. Because yeah? it's always, oh God, oh God, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. <laughs> and no, but nobody says, oh Holy Spirit. You never hear that, right? You never hear that. You, never, you might get a holy shit every once in a while, but that's it. Holy moly, something about like that, right? Oh, drinkers, you know you drink it here, yeah. Uh, I used to drink when I go to buy a gift, man. Now, that used to work out great, though. Oh, you should see my wife up at her present going, were you drunk when you bought this? Matter of fact, I was, honey. Check this out, it's a fish and it sings. Look at this thing. <laughs> Take me to the river, pull me in the water. Come on, how many white trash people got the Billy Bob singing fish all you want? Don't look at me like that. I'm not the only guy to bought any of those things, huh? I used to drink a lot. I'd drink so much, go in and pay for my gas, drive off without pumping it. You ever done that, huh? That's tough to do, man, especially in New Jersey where they pump it for you. Guy was chasing me down. Dude, you forgot your gas! And your Slim Jim. God bless America. You gotta be careful nowadays in America. Drunk driving laws, they get stricter and stricter all the time. Yeah, they all have designated drivers, designated drivers. Oh, yeah, all right. That really doesn't sound like enough, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> here's the thing, if you're gonna have a designated driver, it's always good to designate them at the beginning of the evening. You know, yeah. <laughs> Don't wait till like 3 a.m. I designate you! Cause you're big, you got a lot of tolerance. Plus, you're just drinking beer. <laughs> and you got a shitty car. <laughs> Come on. Any old guys like me? Remember the designated drive? Those guys just drinking beer, had a shitty car? Come on, old guys, huh? Hey, how many old guys here remember when the cops used to let us go, huh? Yeah, yeah. now look at all the young people. What, they used to let you go? <laughs> They did, man. You remember our punishment? We had to pour our beer out right in front of them. That was our punishment. Remember that? Yeah. And we sit there, we look all sad. Mm -hmm. We learned our lesson. Now we gotta go get more money, more beer. Find Bill's brother, get another run. This night's still young. Because you don't want to go through a field test, man. You go through a field test, you got to touch nose, walk the line, do the ABCs. I went to Catholic school, so I'm sitting there going, hmm, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I've never seen a cop get that angry in my life. He's like, no, you can't sing him. You got to say it. Woo! You ever try to do without the tune? If you're drunk, it's impossible, isn't it? I was like, A, Z, Elemento. What's next, breathalyzer? Because <laughs> he don't let you do it. You can't go, now I did my ABC. Can I go away scot-free? Yeah. 
They don't let you do it. Sometimes they tell you to do the alphabet backwards, huh? Whatever you do, don't do this. They go A, B, C, D. <laughs> Like a great crowd out here. Now, let me ask you folks a question. How many people here ever work with the public and learn to hate the public? Anybody out there? Anybody? Yeah. I don't like to brag, but I used to work at Sears, and I'll tell you. People come up and ask you stupid questions when you work in a store, don't they, folks? Oh, I used to stand there, they go, you work here? <laughs> nah, I don't work here. I know somebody in the name tag department. That's why I know, huh? <laughs> folks, you ever wear a name tag? Forget you have it on. Guy looks at me one day, you know something, Pat? I'm not ready to buy. I'm thinking, how the hell does he know my name? <laughs> Got embarrassing too at a bar like after work. Girl said, you're Pat, you work at Sears. Like, yeah, do I know you? I'm a geek, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out to me. Some people, they don't have the courtesy to ask you a full question. You know those people? Look right at you, say, luggage. <laughs> okay, I'll play along. Uh, suitcases, what is travel equipment? Things you lose on a vacation. <laughs> Feel like you're on a game show. Down here, man, what's your name? Denise, Denise, do you have a favorite game show, Denise? All right, thanks for helping me out. That was nice. <laughs> the only reason I asked you, Denise, I asked a lady up front one night in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I asked her, I said, what's your favorite game show? And a strange reaction, she stood up in the front row and she said, Will! <laughs> Exactly. I was scared shitless at that point in time. I think she brainwashed or the gamma rays coming out of the TV. You know? She making love to her husband going, big money, big money, big money, big money, big money. <laughs> spin me, baby, spin me. Uh, they have a voyeur in the corner going, I'm a wheel watcher. <laughs> See folks, I love game shows. My favorite game show is, uh, is Family Feud. That's the one I like. You like Family Feud? I do that. Yeah, because oh, yeah, I need like five, six, seven, eight answers to get something right. I am stupid as hell, folks, I swear to God. Yeah, that's the kind of game show for me. Not Jeopardy, right? You watch Jeopardy, I get, oh man. If I was ever on Jeopardy, they'd have a category, India. Wouldn't matter whether that question's $100 or $1,000. Every time I'm buzzing in, go, who's Gandhi? <laughs> <laughs> who's Gandhi? <laughs> Let's try who's Gandhi. It's like, no, Pat, we're looking for a place. <laughs> Where's Gandhiville? How about Gandhiville, maybe? <laughs> I got no idea, folks, I'm stupid. I was a decent salesperson, though. I know as a good salesperson, you gotta sell a person what they need, know what they want, right? You have to lead them in the right direction. I had a guy walk my depart one day, 450 pounds. Yeah, said he wanted a microwave. I, yeah, I was like, man, this is the last thing you need. <laughs> Get your food any faster, man. Seriously, you, you need to slow that intake down. Yes, what you need is a crock pot. That is over here to the crock pot. You're here in Vegas, man. Here in Vegas, man. You winning? Everybody winning, huh? Yeah. Right, a lot of winners out there. I was losing. I was losing big time on that new machine they got downstairs. The Lucky Enron machine. Anybody played that one? <laughs> Stay away from that. It's right next to Tyco Big Bucks. Which is right next to Martha Stewart's Imclone Progressive Jackpot machine. <laughs> oh, come on, Martha. I heard that she's changing the name of her magazine from Lewin to Livin' to Doing Life. Did anybody hear that? <laughs> I'll get it out there, folks. Ooh, got these financial scandals in the world. They're going crazy. I mean, they should have known there was something wrong with Enron. Even their logo is crooked. That's a crooked logo, folks. Look at that thing. Ooh, they had the women of Enron in Playboy. How about that? Yeah, they said oh, one yeah. girl. Yeah, one girl got rid of 75 pounds due to the layout. Yeah, so that makes twice she lost her ass. How about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, Crazy things going on in the world, folks. I saw where a guy is suing McDonald's, KFC, Wendy's, and Burger King because he said he was unaware that fast food was not healthy for him. <laughs> now there's another guy suing Penthouse, Playboy, and Hustler because he's going blind. Folks, these people are crazy. <laughs> Watching the news. See this on the news? Ooh, Dick Cheney's got a gun. Uh, everybody won. Oh, I'll blast ya. <laughs> yeah, I saw I saw Dick Cheney on CNN. They interviewed him. They asked him about the hunting hunting uh, vacation. He's going, <clears throat> all right. Uh, I can tell you, tell you exactly what happened. Uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people have speculated, speculated that there was a uh, drinking. Drinking going on on that hunting trip. I'd like to say, uh, not true, not true, did not happen. We were on shrooms. Now, <laughs> anybody who's ever done shrooms, well, they would know that uh, there would be good reason why we would uh, <clears throat> not want to talk to anybody in law enforcement <clears throat> before 10 a.m. <clears throat> the next morning. We were still seeing uh, <clears throat> trails about eight. 
And again, anybody who uh, <coughs> has ever done the plant will know that the tops, the tops are the uh, most potent. And I consumed three that morning. And what I thought was the biggest goddamn quail I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Sure, that'd be my friend Harry. <laughs> and I shot him. He shot him. <laughs> Cracks me up, man. I love to say where he says the word peninsula. Peninsula. <laughs> Ash your body land, surrounded on three sides by water. <laughs> kinds of crazy things, man. I saw this. I saw where a Democrat accused George Bush of knowing that Osama bin Laden was going to hijack airplanes before September 11th. They said he knew. Republicans, they said that's good news because that's the first time Democrats ever accused Bush of knowing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, he's just like Forrest Gump to them, isn't he? I stole Florida, I did. Thanks to my brother, Jab. I love you, Jab A. Bush, it's a family name. Then they impeached Clinton in 1998. I figured out what that whole impeachment thing was about. I think the American people probably said, well, all politicians lie. Clinton lies the best, so he wins. <laughs> he was a good liar, wasn't he? You gotta give him that. It all depends on what your definition of the word is. is. <laughs> the hell does that mean? <laughs> Any Clinton haters here? Glad he's not president anymore? Where are you at? Come on, anybody here, huh? A few of you? All right, yeah, all right, good. Me too. There's only one thing I liked about him. You know what it was? His goddamn voice. That's the only thing I like about him. <laughs> but love him or hate him, I will admit one thing. He had an enormous set of balls on him, didn't he? He had big balls, man. He had big balls. Man. Who would ever think a guy would have the balls to say blowjobs don't count? Do you ever think you see that happen in your lifetime? <laughs> when were you going to see that happen? I was watching him go, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Go, Honey, he's going to say blowjobs don't count. You watch, I swear. I think they got a separate plane just carry his balls around, honey. That's what I think. <laughs> I think they're at the airport going, here goes President Clinton on Air Force One, he was balls in Air Force Two. <laughs> Those are big balls, man. Think about it. Who has bigger balls than Bill Clinton, huh? Jesse Jackson. That's the only guy I can think of right there, yeah. Because it, it doesn't matter what happens. Jesse's right in front of the camera. The war starts in Afghanistan. I want to go to Afghanistan to talk to the Taliban. About Tuzmekistan, Uzbekistan, we'll talk around my lemonade stand. <laughs> There'll be no ripping as long as we're sipping. <laughs> you gotta give it up for Jesse. Jesse had a great idea, man. He wants to make Iran and Iraq one country called Iraq. Did anybody hear about that one? <laughs> we were down on Americans once before. We thought they were riding to the core. Now we have seen the light. We don't want to fight. Come with your missile sword. We don't, we don't want a war. What we want? Peace, peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace in that Middle East. Yeah, thank you, white people. Thank you, white people. Thank you very much. Brother in the back going, I heard Eminem, but that's Reese's Pieces right there. That, that sounds like he'd kill a cat or something. Damn. They advertise the Viagra on television. You see him dancing on a boat. They got a little music behind them. I like to see a Viagra jingle. Be like, Viagra, I just got my jar of Viagra. And suddenly I see... I'm happy as can be. <laughs> Actually, it's not that happy tune. Over 80 guys dead on Viagra. Apparently, they got a little stiffer than they bargained for, didn't they? Yeah, they did. <laughs> it's sad, I know. Anybody on the end, like, That's the newest prescription drug pill approved by the FDA. It's for male enhancement. Makes your penis bigger. <laughs> Folks haven't heard about that. That's pretty reassuring, isn't it? When you think about it. Isn't it reassuring to think that the terrorists are in their caves working on the most diabolical ways to kill millions of people? Our guys in the lab working on making our dicks bigger. All right, huh? Good to see we got our priorities straight, huh? Like, yo, man, Philly's on fire. Who gives a shit? Look at the size of my dick. But we got anthrax all over the country. Sorry, still don't care. Over hill, over dale. <laughs> man, be careful. Even though if you do take the enzyme, be careful if you're a smoker, because they say smoking causes impotence. Did you read that? Impotence, yes. Do what I do. Smoke the camel light with a Viagra filter tip. That's the one you gotta get right there. It says, get your hump back right on the box. Look at that, right there. Got a coupon for enzyme on the back for a long, hard night. There it is, right there. Yeah, Enza. I don't know if you've seen the Enza, if they have them in your area, but they advertise it with the slogan, a white man's trip to a black man's world. I don't know if anybody's heard about that. Look for it. It is a
I'll tell you what I'll do, folks. I'll tell you a joke, and then I'll tell you as a celebrity or bad impression, I'll tell you the same joke. We'll see the way the joke changes. All right, here's the joke. Man calls home, and the maid answers the phone. He says, let me talk to my wife. So she's upstairs in bed with another man. He said, what? You get a gun out of my gun rack. Shoot both of them. He says, shoot both of them? Yeah, shoot both of them. Here's the maid drop the phone. Here's the maid drop the stairs. Here's the Here's the maid run down the stairs. She says, I shot him. I shot them both. He goes, good, I heard you. He goes, now you got to get rid of the gun. She says, I already got rid of the gun. He goes, where'd you put it? She said, in the swimming pool. He said, swimming pool? Is this 8675309? It's wrong house. It's a reason did that. Everybody tells a joke differently. So what if Robin Leach had told you that same joke? A man calls home. <laughs> And it's a two-story, eight-bedroom condominium on the south of France. And the maid, a woman of foreign descent, answers the phone. He says, let me talk to my beloved. Says she's upstairs in the bedroom with another man. The bedroom that is decorated in Thomas Fell furniture and an early American motif. Home pregnancy test by Dollar Tree. Teddy Kennedy. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, half, uh, this half-naked man who uh, calls you home, and uh, the, uh, 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 the police, police answer the uh, phone and say, uh, if you're on your way home, it's our uh, time to uh, get your story straight. <laughs> there is a car in the pool. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, okay. The man calls home, and it is his castle. Yeah. Yeah, and the peasant answers the phone. Yeah. And says, let me talk to my woman. Says, she's upstairs in the bed with the other man. The dog is making for the seven. I mean, this is the ball. And blast them to smithereens. <laughs> yeah. He hears the maid drop the phone. He hears. House is totally destroyed. <laughs> the animate says, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, so this mad man calls home. And uh, then the Holy Field answered the phone. Except he can't hear nothing because somebody bit his ear off or something. Ludicrous. Oh, no, yeah. My favorite uh, sports announcer of all time, Harry Cosell. So a man calls home. <laughs> and I can't miss blue chip prospect from the University of Alabama and says the phone. He says, let me talk to my spouse. He said, at this egregious unceremonial point in time, she is upstairs in bed with another man. And it looks like he could go all the way. I'm on sports, Dick Vitale. Okay, baby. Man calls home, man is the phone. Says, let me talk to my wife. Says, she's upstairs in bed with another man. Looks like he's doing a Dempsey do dog around, baby. He's awesome, baby. He's awesome. <laughs> well, I'm on sports. Let's see. Stephen A. Smith. Same joke. I don't care if you don't know who he is. Um, he's an ESPN sports analyst. <sighs> So a man calls home. There's no question about that. You can't question that. That's not a questionable fact. The fact is that the man called home. However, if you want to say who answered the phone, whether it's Schwarzenegger the maid or whatever, you got a valid point. Quite frankly, that's all you need. Remember, it's my house. But you're welcome anytime. I'm on initials, George W. Bush. And again, I don't care if you don't know who he is. <laughs> so here's your, here's your yeah, man, this is your, here's your man, this is your, yeah. A man <laughs> calls home. That's his house. That's where he lives. This is a residence. <laughs> Dick Cheney <laughs> answers the phone. <laughs> Says, sorry, no weapons of mass destruction here either. <laughs> Best you call back when Arnold's around. <laughs> Bill Clinton. So a man calls home. <laughs> and an intern answers the phone. <laughs> Says, let me talk to the bitch. 
Says she's upstairs in bed with another man. Said, Greg, get my cigar box. I'll meet you by the cement pond. Show you my weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> Any impressions off the top of your head? You want to hear tell that joke, folks? I got a couple minutes left. Yeah, man. Come on. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash? <laughs> oh, I'm on shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. <laughs> I can't do him telling the joke. Somebody else. Jim Rome. Who? Jim Rome. Richard Pryor. So man goes home, right? Gotta take a shit, right? <laughs> Something else? Some are gonna be quick. Jack Nicholson. Oh, well, I got glasses for that one. <laughs> so a man calls home. <laughs> and the Laker girls answer the phone. <laughs> and they say, come on home, Big Daddy. Pull out your winky and we're going to treat it like a strawberry ice cream cone. Michael Jackson. Uh, um, okay, all right. Um, so, um, so uh, a man calls home. And, um, um, a Boy Scout answers the phone. Says they're jamboree in the bedroom. Says you bet. He goes, oh, don't stop ticketing. Don't stop ticketing. <laughs> Black guys clapping. Come on, folks. Here's really. Give me. Come on, really. Al Pacino, Al Pacino heard. Ha, 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 So, as a man, uh, calls home, man, answers the phone. So we got problems, so oh yeah? Fuck you. <laughs> and one more thing, fuck you. What are you doing? That stuff is sad. I'm sorry. Anybody else? Sam Kinison. Who? Sam Kinison. Sam Kinison. Oh, 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 oh! A man calls home, and a greasy whore answers the phone. Says, die in hell, bitch, die in hell. That one hurts a little bit. Okay, two more, three more I'll do. Here we go, uh, uh, Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy, and then uh, Cartman from South Park. Okay, here we go. Chris Rock. So a man calls home. And man, bitch, man, bitch, answers the phone. Says, you got crack. Eddie Murphy. <laughs> so a man calls home. And Donkey answers the phone. <laughs> Eric Carbon. Okay, so this guy calls home, okay? So he's a, uh, I was kick ass jokes about the best for balls, lady. The best for my balls, okay? Yeah, man calls home and Kyle answers the phone. Say, like, Kyle, you know what? Your mom is a bitch. <laughs> Cause mom's a bitch, biggest bitch in the whole wide world. Cause mom's a bitch, biggest bitch in the whole wide world. Cause my baby's a whole wide world. Cause mom's a bitch. That's my time, folks. Thank you very much. Yeah, get warmed up. Come on, we got a great show. Let me hear you out there. Super. <laughs> Sean Connery being confronted by a large Bengal tiger. My, that's one big pushy. Thank you. That's a quick one. It's in and out. It's real quick. <laughs> Edith and Archie Bunker with a drug problem. Hey, Archie, can I do another line? <laughs> hey, this you got a snort all a ball. <laughs> Papa and olive oil on their wedding night. Oh, here, oh, she does it so good. Oh, here. Oh, You're so kinky with your pipe. Oh, ski da ba ba ba. Oh, ski ba 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 ba. Oh, yeah. I love snow, blows me down. <laughs> oh, Papa, I were married. I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> Goddamn truth. Too much shows a lot of times up in the Poconos. I don't know any people from the Poconos. But right before they, uh, they put the comedian on, they play a not so newlywed game. All right? And what they'll do is they bring four couples on stage and they ask them a bunch of not so newlywed questions. And one of the questions they ask them is how many times they had licky dicky. Mandy, that means oral sex. 
how many times they had licky dicky in the past week? And the night I was there, three out of the four ladies said, zero. Yeah. And I was in the back room going, yeah! I am not alone! <laughs> not just me not getting it, just about everybody going to that last survey. What killed me was the other lady, she came out, she said five times. Yeah, then her guy came out, he said four. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I had to point out to him how lucky he was to be getting blowjobs he was forgetting about, you know what I mean? <laughs> Either that or she's giving out a few extras. Either way, it is a win-win. Do you guys uh, ask the married guys a question? How many married guys out there have wives who ask them where they're going all the time? Don't worry, I know she's right next to you. Come on. <laughs> I know she does. They all do it. Now, I'll, I'll make you feel better, guys, all right? Because my wife will ask me where I'm going when I'm going to another room of the house. <laughs> have you ever had that conversation? You're just walking by. Where are you going? Whoa! Uh, the kitchen? What for? I was thinking about a cookie. Go ahead. What? Was that checkpoint cookie, Charlene? What you all want on there? It's gotten bad, folks. I got a low jack in my ass right now. She's got me on satellite. And you never win arguments with your ladies. Guys, you win arguments with your ladies? Never. All right, man, you never. Doesn't matter how many facts, how much logic is moving your direction. Uh, last time I was here, like three months ago, my wife called me up and she goes, Pat, I have a problem. I go, what is it? She goes, my car won't start. I think it's the battery. So I said to her, did you call the AAA club? She said to me, no, why would I do that? <laughs> I don't know, honey, why would you give a choking victim the Holland maneuver? Why would you do that? <laughs> she says, don't worry, I'll do it tomorrow. Next day, Pat, turns out it's not the battery. Turns out it's the starter. Oh, really? The AAA club come out? No, no, no. Colleen thinks it's the starter. <laughs> Your sister took a look at the car? No, don't be stupid. I was talking to her on the phone! She diagnosed the problem through the phone! What pissed me off, she diagnosed it correctly, and that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> you never win the argument, yeah. Anybody, any guy out there guy got a wife thinks she's funny? Don't worry, I know she's sitting right next to you, come on. Yeah, my wife thinks she's funny, yeah. Last, uh, last uh, October, you know what she got me for a little present? She got me a pair of uh, orange boxer shorts, orange boxer shorts with little ghosts on them that say, boo. Yeah, and last week I'm pulling them on, right? And she's over in the corner, she's laughing her ass off. I, I go, what's so damn funny? She goes, I was just thinking that nothing in there is gonna scare anybody. <laughs> really, you, know, you laugh at that, that's funny? So I got her a nice pair of uh, pink frilly panties. They're nice. That's WMD right on the front. <laughs> Weapon of male destruction. Come on, you know it is. Yeah, man. You guys, uh, have any impressions you want to hear real quick? Anybody? Okay, thanks for playing along. All right, good. All right. Now, Mike and Mandy, how long have you guys been married? Oh, no, he, she's Mandy over here. I'm sorry. I got, I got mixed up. Now he's like, oh, I like Mandy over there. Maybe I will go over there back to Mandy. Mike and Marilyn, how long have you folks been married? Oh, uh, 32 years. What, you think you're on Jeopardy or something? Asking a form of a question? I think that's going to get you? Because here's the thing. 32 years. In the 32 years you've been married, Meryl, have you ever cut Mike off? <laughs> Never. Wow, she lies real well, too. Because um, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. You make him sleep on the couch. You know, not the, not the new way where you throw his dick into the field. I ain't talking about that, no. <laughs> not the crazy shit those kids do today, Marilyn. I'm talking about, you know, you make him sleep on the couch, you know. I found a way. I get, I get sex with my wife now anytime I want. Yeah, when you guys like that. From your wives, not mine. You're perking up a little too quick over there. I was going, where you live? I will use MapQuest. Now, I found out there's one little thing you need to do for your ladies. Guys, one little thing. Yeah, you know what it is? Woo! It's housework. A lot of goddamn housework. <laughs> ladies, clap me. No, I'm right, man. It's the truth. You get out the mop and glow, you do, you're getting the mop and blow. That's what you're getting, man. You gotta do that. I mean, I was so horny one day, man. I was vacuuming. I'm breastfeeding the baby, you know. <laughs> His douche commercial came on. I sang right along with the jingle. I did. Because those, those are the commercials I see in the afternoon. They scare the hell out of me sometimes, man. You ever see that one to start off and just have two words that say, why douche? Whoa, hey, no. Whoa. <laughs> I've got no idea on that one. <laughs> 
They had another one that said, you know, no woman has time, has time for a yeast infection. Really? Gee, I guess no guy has time to get hit in the nuts with a pipe. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> Who's got time for something like that? Like there's thousands of women walking around going, you know, look at that. I, I got about an hour to kill right now. I sure could use an itch to last for about seven days. That's what I'm looking for. Look, I apologize every lady for saying seven days, okay? But I wrote that joke when it was Monistat 7, all right? <laughs> the hell is it now? It's like Monistat on contact. <laughs> Keeps getting lower. Like 10 years ago, I remember seeing Monistat 7. It was like 3, 1. I'm in the drugstore the other day, folks. I got Monistat 7 right next to it, Monistat 3. Mm. Who the hell is buying Monistat 7? <laughs> it's two bucks difference. <laughs> Who the hell's walking around scratching next to four days, 50 cents a day? That's all I'm asking. I can see not buying the one. You're like, whoa, that's a little too quick right there. I don't think we need to send you anything. See, I know it's marketing, right? I know it's marketing like the EPT commercial where they just had guys in EPT. You have to picture a woman telling a guy she's pregnant. You watch different reactions from different guys, right? One guy's going, all right. Another guy, yeah. Last guy goes, cool. Where's that guy going, you're shitting me! The real guy, where would he be at? Where's that dirt bag going, do I know you? You don't look familiar. Where's that Scooby-Doo Astro guy going, ruh -ru. hey, There's a sexist commercial I see on the afternoon. It's sexist, I can't believe they put it on. It's not secret deodorant. I think everybody knows that one, right? Strong enough for man, but... Yeah, like we're just greasy bastards, right? Yeah. Last year, they knew the new version. Yep, pH balance for a woman. Yep, pH, of course, stands for penis haters. Come on, that's an easy one. Somebody should have got that. And they work on Madison Avenue, because here's the commercial I'm talking about. I know you've seen it. That woman comes out, she goes, hey, 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 hey. You see this tampon? Do you? Do you? Do you? <laughs> it was designed 50 years ago. <laughs> By a man. Then fire would shoot out her ass. Does anybody remember that commercial? I may have embellished a little bit on that, but that's the basic premise of the commercial. What are they saying? They're saying if you have that equipment, you can't design that type of a product. But I would like to say non-sexistly, me, myself, I'd rather have a condom that was designed by a woman. Right, Marilyn? Because you know it'd be patent and would fit right if we're lucky it has wings. That's all I'm saying right there. Hey, how many of y'all using condoms, condom users? Nobody, all right, that's nice. Good to see, Good to see that message getting out, isn't it? That's because the first condom commercials were so scared, like, stop a killer, use a condom, now. Whoa, you're lucky you get an erection after watching that commercial, right? I'll tell you what needs to happen. Trojan needs to buy the rights to Good and Plenty Candy. Yeah, because Good and Plenty had a great theme song, Shitty Candy. Yeah, he could use that thing to sell condoms. Like, Charlie says, love my Good and Plenty. Charlie says, really makes it swell. Charlie says, love my good and plenty. Don't know any other condom that makes love so well. Right? Either that or before you know, you'd be going, Rubberoni. Protection for your meat. Now see, that's a good commercial. You see what I'm saying? Rubberoni. Whenever you're in heat, ch -ch -ch, you take out the packet. You know it's a goodie. You know where it goes. It goes on your woody. Rubberoni. And hey, you folks have been a great crowd. I've been Pat O'Donnell. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Great for a great time. You've been great. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah.